Now, by no means is this a comprehensive review of the Note 20 Ultra. It's more of a video of the reasons why I chose to pick a phone from six months ago, from 2020, now in 2021. Since I was starting this channel right about the time I was buying a new phone, I wanted one device that did it all. Now, I don't own a computer, so I wanted one device that would be my everything. It would be my workhorse, it would have good cameras, it would become a full-fledged desktop when I needed to because I wanted to start this channel and not break the bank too much. So that pretty much narrowed it down, but there's more to why I chose the Note 20 Ultra. You could be on team Android or team iOS, but there is no denying that the iPhones are in a league of its own uh, in terms of cameras, especially when you're comparing it to video capabilities. And in the Android side of the world, the pixels come close in terms of stills, but they definitely fall back in, in, in capturing video. The Samsungs on the other hand kind of draw correlation between the two. They definitely don't do videos exceptionally better than the iPhones, but they come comfortably close. And uh, stills are arguably better than the current generation of pixels. So that correlation kind of sealed the deal of why I wanted a Samsung device. Now, even though I'm predominantly invested in the Android side of the world, I wouldn't really mind making the jump to iOS if it wasn't for Apple's walled garden. Apple has a lot of restrictions on using its devices by itself. Just a simple example, now we do use a lot of streaming platforms for our music like Spotify, but as a creator you have a lot of local uh, files that you'd like to use in your uh, video editing software. In order to transfer audio files to your iPhone, you kind of have to do it through iTunes or even if you download it through their new a file manager, it's difficult to kind of import it into your video editing software. So it's it's quite a tedious task. While on the other hand, Android makes it uh, very fluid. Why did I choose to buy the Note 20 Ultra over the S21 Ultra that just launched this month, which is Samsung's latest flagship? Now, Samsung has a reputation of holding on to veteran features the longest, like micro SD card expansion or the headphone jack. However, uh, the headphone jack was kind of bid adieu to a couple of generations back by Samsung because the Note 20 Ultra does not have the headphone jack. It still has the micro SD card though, which the S21 Ultra does not. Now, even though for an everyday user, a 256 GB or 512 GB of memory on their phone is more than sufficient, but for someone who's creating on the fly with the phone being main device, you have a lot of 4K 60 FPS footage that you're shooting and editing on the fly with B-rolls. So you can run out of that memory and knowing that if you do run out of that memory, you can increase your memory just by buying a micro SD card instead of just swapping your phone over is a little comforting. Also the S Pen. Now I know the S21 Ultra does have S Pen support, but it is more of a passive S Pen as compared to the Note's active S Pen. Let me explain. With the S21 Ultra, the S Pen is an optional feature that you can buy with a case. The S Pen houses in that case, not into the phone. And I say it's a passive S Pen because it's not Bluetooth enabled and you can't do a lot of things that you can do with the S Pen on the Note 20 Ultra. For example, uh, use it as a Bluetooth uh, remote to click pictures while your phone is away or record videos. Uh, use it as a smart select to make GIFs and, and stuff like that. And also, I didn't know that the S Pen would be this important to me until I realized that I also edit my videos on the phone. And even though I can edit on the timeline with my chunky, clunky fingers, the S Pen is more like a mouse for your phone, so you're a little more precise and that kind of makes the editing process a lot more fluid. Now, as much as I would have loved to have a 3.5mm jack in the chassis of the phone, a 600 rupees adapter from Samsung really solved the problem of me attaching a lav mic or a shotgun mic while I'm vlogging straight into the phone. And talking about mic input, I think this is one of the most underrated features of a Samsung flagship device is its native camera app. Very few OEMs give you the option of attaching external mics in their native camera app. For example, OnePlus, if you'd attach it via an adapter, it does not recognize an external mic and you need to download third-party apps like Open Camera in order to navigate this problem. Uh, however, Samsung allows you to do this in its native camera app. And another very underrated feature about Samsung's native camera app is its pro video mode. I think Samsung throws everything, including the kitchen sink, into the mix when it comes to their camera app. Very few OEMs give you a pro mode uh, 
in their native camera apps and Samsung is one of them. I think LG does it and Samsung, these are the only two where you can control ISO, uh, white balance, uh, shutter speed, focus peaking, you can kind of uh, lock focus and manually adjust focus, which for someone who's creating and using your phone as your main camera, I think is, is a very underrated feature. Talking about underrated features, another thing that a lot of tech tubers don't talk about is that if you buy a Samsung flagship device, they give you Microsoft Office Suite for free on the device. Uh, and uh, I use a lot of Word and Excel, so it depends on your use case scenario, but I find a lot of value in getting uh, my, the whole Microsoft Office Suite for free on your phone. Now I mentioned umpteen number of times that uh, this is my workhorse, this is my only device that I own. So one of the reasons I was really attracted to the Note 20 Ultra was Samsung DeX, which stands for Desktop Experience. So as long as your smart TV and your phone is in the same wireless network, you have a version of your phone in desktop mode on your smart TV and you can use your phone as a trackpad and a keyboard. And I think that's brilliant because uh, it, much like Windows, you can have multiple windows open, you can maximize and minimize multiple apps, uh, play videos directly from your phone. I also have an 8TB hard disk where I dump all my footage and uh, just with the help of an OTG cable, I can read that 8TB hard disk on my phone and with UFS 3.0 uh, transferring files from the hard disk to the phone is uh, exceptionally fast. So I don't really miss a desktop all that much. So these are the main reasons why I decided to go for the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And if you kind of somehow found value in this and are looking at buying the Note 20 Ultra this year, just bear in mind though, on a side note, <laughs> on a side note, uh, just bear in mind though that Samsung sells two variants of the same flagship, uh, no matter what Samsung flagship you're buying. One that is made with Qualcomm's Snapdragon chipset in it and one that's made with Samsung's very own Exynos chipset. Now in the past, history is proven and history repeats itself. The Exynos variant is less power efficient and less powerful compared to its Qualcomm counterpart. Sadly, in India, Samsung officially only sells the Exynos variant. But if you really dig deep, you do get the Snapdragon, the Qualcomm Snapdragon variant in India. Uh, unofficially, of course, because my phone's a Korean uh, phone. Uh, the only caveat to that is that you cannot take advantage of any of Amazon's or Flipkart's EMI schemes. You kind of have to pay in cash in full and you kind of also lose warranty on the product. Uh, so those are the only two caveats. Uh, on the other hand though, in exchange, you get excellent battery life and a little more powerful phone than the Exynos variant. Well, that's it from me, guys. This is a new channel and this is just not related to tech, but I have an affiliation to tech. So I thought might as well churn out a tech video since my phone is pretty new. Uh, I would really appreciate a like. Go ahead and share this video with someone who you'd feel would find value in it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, would really appreciate it if you did. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I have links down in the show notes. Would love to see you on those platforms too. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you around. Bye-bye.